welcome to a little box of paints my name is sophie and over the next few weeks i am going to be showing you some cool art activities you can do at home with your kids hopefully you have some of these materials on hand um, i was given the idea by some of my friends who are at home uh, for kind of the unforeseeable future with their kids and they're looking for some different cool activities to do i'm an art teacher i've spent a lot of time creating art with children, and uh, I'm hoping that you can use some of the things that I share with you. Um, my goal for this is to make sure that I use materials that you could potentially have at home or give you suggestions on ones that you could sub in instead, okay? Um, today, we're gonna be doing a little bit of painting. We are going to be using um, some water-based paints. I'm using watercolor paint. If you don't have watercolor paint, that's totally fine. Any type of water-based paint will work as long as you can mix it in with water so that there's more of a water to paint ratio, which means that you're gonna have a really sort of see-through color of your paint. It's not gonna to be too thick on the paper. Same, you can use whatever kind of paper you have at home. I'm using watercolor paper because that's what I have, but any type of white paper will work well for this. I'm also going to be using a white wax crayon. Hopefully you have some crayons around the house. Once again, if you don't, you can try a white oil pastel or even a white candle. Dinner candles work really well because you can hold them um, similar to a pencil or a paintbrush. I've also got a few extra things with me here. I've got my water cup to rinse my brush. I've got some paper towel to blot my brush. I have some tape. I find it really helpful to tape down my paper when I'm working with any type of paint that has a lot of water in it so the paper doesn't kind of bubble up. Um, I'm using masking tape, but if you don't have that, washi tape is okay too, even scotch tape if that's what you have. The last thing we're gonna need is a paintbrush. I've got a smaller brush. I know a lot of you with little ones at home probably have bigger, thicker brushes. That's totally fine, whatever brush works for you. So I'm gonna be showing you some step-by-step. -step. I'm gonna actually show you what I'm working on as well and uh, some different tips and tricks you can do with your own kids at home. Most of these videos are geared towards younger kids, but they would work well with all ages. If you wanna try them out on your own too, sometimes it can be really relaxing to just take a few minutes and create a little bit on your own as well. So we're gonna get started. Um, like I said, the first thing I like to do is tape down my paper. Um, I'm gonna actually use the washi tape. I'm just gonna tape down the corners. Sometimes um, it looks really nice when you're doing a painting to tape around the whole frame of the paper. Um, you can do that if you want, but just to save time for me today while I'm filming, I'm just gonna tape the corner. You still end up with like a nice little, almost like a, those old time photo frame corners on your work if you do it that way too. Okay, so I'm just gonna film this or uh, tape this down. Just keeps your paper straight. You might notice that I also have a protective mat over top of my table. Um, I always suggest, always, um, if you can protect the surface you're working on, you should. Uh, this is a drafting cutting mat that I have, but newspaper works well, magazines, whatever, okay? Just make sure that you're not setting it up for your kids to uh, mess up your whole table, okay? Especially if you're working on the dining room. Um, so I'm ready to start. Now, the reason we are doing this with white wax crayon is because it is a type of material that will resist when we paint over it with a water-based paint, okay? Um, I love white crayons for this. Like I said, white oil pastel or um, a white candle, like a dinner candle, would work well too. The trick with this is that it's a bit of a surprise for the kids. I've done this type of art with uh, students in the past when we studied watercolor painting, and they really like the surprise of not knowing exactly what's gonna happen. So if you have a kid that's into surprises or kind of having experimenting a little bit, this is a cool activity for them. Um, another option, if you have kids who like to be a little more precise, you can lightly draw out the design in pencil first so you can see what you're doing. Um, I know some kids really like to see that ahead of time, which is all right. But I'm not gonna do that. I do have an example I'll show you a little after of what that looks like, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do is get started. I am going to actually do a bit of a scene of a town or a village. So I'm gonna draw up and you'll notice that you can't really see what I'm drawing, right? Because it's white wax crown on white paper. I'm gonna do what I think is a little bit of a um, triangle to roof and then go all the way down to the paper. Now, a little cheater tip here. If you want to try and see where you've drawn, if you kind of lean your head and you have a nice light source, you can see where the wax crayon's gone onto the paper. So you can, you can tell your kids if they really want to peek a little bit, they can do that, okay? So I've drawn one, I'm gonna do another building, maybe a little taller. Now, as I'm drawing these buildings, I can think about what's gonna go inside the buildings too. Maybe we're gonna have some windows. So I'm gonna draw a square window here and another one. All right, maybe a really tall door. Maybe this is a building for very tall people. 
and I'm gonna fill that in. And the trick is anything that you fill in with this white wax crayon or candle or oil pastel that you're using, the paint won't stick to it. So it will stay white. It's called a wax resist technique. Okay, I'm gonna just double check here so I can see where I've worked. I'm gonna add another couple windows here. Now I'm going pretty fast. I expect you guys will probably, hopefully take a little bit more time as I usually tell my students, right? I'm doing this, they're gonna do a better job. I hope it's the same for you at home. Um, so I've got two buildings here. Okay, I'm gonna actually do, add a little something a little crazy. I'm gonna maybe add a bit of a castle tower to my buildings, why not, right? Get a little nuts up in here, there we go. There's my castle building. And I'm gonna maybe add some areas that could potentially be bricks. I don't really know, I can't really tell, right? I can't really see it, so it's gonna be a surprise. Maybe I've got a little shorter building here. Maybe it's a, it's a stable for some horses, I don't know. Could be anything. This is actually turning into a bit of a castle instead of a cityscape, which is all right. Cool thing about art, changes all the time. And then one last building at the end. And I'm just gonna kind of fill this in with some cool designs. Now my sky is a little, little sad, a little empty, so I'm gonna add a bit of a night scene. I think that this works really well with night scenes because you can use the white wax crown for some stars. So I'm gonna draw a crescent moon here, lovely crescent moon, and I'm gonna fill it in. Remember, anything you fill in with the wax crayon, the paint won't resist, to, or won't stick to, it will resist. I'm gonna do some swirly stars, getting a bit of a starry night inspiration here. Speaking of, we will definitely be doing some um, specific artist inspired activities throughout the next few weeks as well. So you can tune in for that. And uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty good, ready to go. Um, the trick with this is when you're using your paints, let's say you're using paint from a tube and you're mixing it in with a little bit of water, um, which is what you should be doing. Or if you have the paint trays like these, um, you need to make sure you have enough water that your paint will spread very easily across the paper and that it will actually resist the wax. If you're using paint and you don't have enough water, it won't actually resist. It'll, it might just cover up the wax, okay? Um, if that happens to you, don't worry about it. Just try it again, add more water, right? No big deal. So I am going to add a little bit of water to my brush and I always like to blot it on a bit of paper towel first. And uh, I'm gonna pick a color. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna go with this awesome orange color. All right, spring's coming, gonna use a little bit of orange here. Now the way to check if you've got enough water, okay, is when you first place your brush across the paper, all right, if you start to find, ooh, you can already see the wax. If you start to find that you are missing um, some of the color on the paper, what I would do is I would just blot my brush in a little bit more water and spread it out. Okay, and as I kind of work up here a little bit, you can see where I added the wax crayon. This is more of like a yellow than an orange, isn't it? Where I added the wax crayon, it's actually resisting. All right, so I've gone up to the top. That was the castle that I made. I'm gonna add a little bit of red here too. And the nice thing about this is they blend together so nicely, especially if you're using enough water. This is why, honestly, I would recommend doing this with watercolor paints if you can. Um, they're usually pretty cheap to get in sets as well. You can order them online or if you're still able to go out and do a little bit of shopping at some grocery stores, they often have um, areas where you can pick up some cheap art supplies, okay? But like I said, any type of craft paint you have at home, as long as it's water-based, is gonna work for this. So this is turning out pretty cool. You can see the little zigzag pattern that I did here. You'll notice I'm not painting up into the sky. That's because I'm gonna use a different color for the sky after. Okay, so look, it's kind of blending together all fiery. I can go in and just add a bit of water instead of new paint. I can paint in different directions. I can do a little, some swirls here, whatever I like, okay? Um, I mean, kids love painting. There's no, there's no way around that. They love painting, they love to paint, they love to get messy. Uh, and this just gives them a chance to kind of go nuts, right? It doesn't matter if they paint in the lines, they can't see the lines, right? So it really just gives them an opportunity to kind of be a little surprised which is why I love it. Oh, dropped a little bit of water, that's okay. All right, let's see, I'm almost done. Now, if you do find that you're not really seeing a lot of the wax, you can always go over top with a bit of a drier brush and you should be able to pick up some of that color. Okay, so you can see a little bit more of it. That might work for you. Eh, it didn't work so well for me. Hopefully it works for you. One thing I always tell my students really with art is if you feel like you've made a mistake, just fake it, fake it till you make it. Nobody knows that you made a mistake except you, so you can just kind of own it, 
okay? Um, and that's something you can model for your kids as well. If they do something and they don't really like the way it works, just say, oh, well, whatever. How can we, how can we change it? How can we make it look, look like you meant to do that? Okay, um, that's some useful <laughs> teacher advice there for you. Hopefully it's useful, I don't know. All right, I've got my buildings done here. I think these look super awesome. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint the sky and I am definitely gonna go with black for a nice night sky. Of course, because it's watercolor, it's gonna actually look a little bit gray, but it works so well with the wax resist. And you'll notice how I'm just kind of painting back and forth. Your kids are gonna paint all over the place, absolutely. Um, but that's for them to do and for them to discover, okay? The greatest thing about it is theirs does not have to look like mine. It's gonna look like theirs. Same with you. If you're doing this as an adult, it's gonna look like yours. It does not have to look like mine. I'm just showing you an example. I hate when art that um, people produce is expected to look like the example. That is not how it should be. It's there as a guide to inspire you, not to tell you what to do. Cool. Voila, I like the way that looks. All right, so um, when you're done, you'll see that it's already started to kind of bubble up a little bit. When you're done, I would leave it in a space that it can dry for a couple minutes before you take the tape off, if possible. Um, I'm gonna take my tape off right now, but that's because I uh, don't really have a choice. <laughs> but if I did have a choice right now, I would be leaving it on there. So you get these cool little kind of triangles, depending on the type of tape you use. Scotch tape, unfortunately, doesn't always do that. You might have to cut the scotch tape off and fold it over. Um, but yeah, works pretty good. And here we go. If your painting is very wet, do not pick it up and turn it on its side. Keep it flat like this. Okay. Mine is not too wet, so I can show you. All right. You can kind of see there, we've got my buildings in the background. I've got another one that I can show you, um, that I did a little earlier. You can see the papers already started to curl. Um, and this one, Basically, I did one area with a little bit of pencil and did the wax over top and you can see that you can still see the pencil. Okay, um, I hope you like this. After it's dry, of course, you're going to want to go in and have your kids sign their name. It's very important, right? Always. And you can put it on the fridge. You can take a picture. I would love for you to share it with me. Um, I'll have some information at the very end of the video of how you can share it. Um, I'm hoping to get up on Facebook. I'm already on Instagram, a little box of paints. You can follow me on there. Um, and of course, the YouTube channel. I'm also really hoping that as parents, or maybe you're an educator as well, you can share these videos with people you know who might need a little bit of help during these times. That's why I'm doing it, is to just basically give kids and their families a bit of a break, a bit of a break from all the stuff going on right now. They can maybe forget about it for a little while and just focus on creating together as a family. I'm also going to be doing videos for grown-ups um, with a little bit more kind of <laughs> advanced work. Um, so I'm hoping that if you're interested in doing some art on your own, you can check those out and they'll be titled and available on my YouTube page as well. Okay. Thanks so much for checking in. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Have an awesome day.